Oh, welcome to Thursday, people. I don't even know what freaking time it is. Oh, it's 10 to 3. Yeah, I haven't been up that long. Got up at, a, well, got up at 2.30 for, yeah, gotta love that kind. Uh, went and checked the mail. Got my shit from CanVape, because I ordered a bunch of butterscotch uh, e-juice from Paradise Vapes, because I wanted that kind, and I couldn't wait for Yalik to ship theirs. I'm hearing something outside that sounds like a, a tractor or something in reverse. I'm questioning if it's Buddy who uh, keeps plowing my driveway, but every time I look outside, I can't see no tractor. I can only hear them. Like, there's totally nothing out there. Totally. But I can totally hear beep, beep, beep from a tractor backing up and things. So I don't understand what's really going on here. Oh well, not a big deal. One thing that is a big deal is uh, tonight we're short staffed at work. That's going to suck. Luckily, I am not prime. Bonus. But like I said, it's going to suck being short staffed at work. Another thing that's uh, funny is we need to pick our holidays already. And I have four weeks, and I did the math, and I could take the whole whole month of August off if I wanted to. Just if I wanted to be a dick about it. So, that might happen. That might happen. Um, but for now, I need to go rock a squirrely, and then we're going to carry on with this video. Here we are. So, let's uh, hammer down and rock a freaking squirrely. Oh my god, was that ever needed. Holy... I feel 72 pounds lighter. I just don't look it. Well, my room just smells like butterscotch right now. Mainly because I got the new juice in, hey? Uh, freaking butterscotch, butterscotch. Butterscotch, 12 milligrams, 50-50. Freaking, uh, my paradise vapes. Keep out of reach of children and pets. Do not drink. Yeah, because it'll make you really sick. Probably kill your pets, that's for sure. Also forgot that I ordered this year new tank. I just built it, and uh, the air hole, that little dot there, eh, it's kind of flaky, you know. Doesn't vent enough gases in to really get the atomizer cooking. But I'm, I built a really big coil, 2.3 ohms, and I got 3.7 volts left in it. And I'm running this thing at 11 watts, which is the max it can do. And uh, it's not too bad, not too bad. Just this, uh, I need to steep my. Uh, my butterscotch a little bit, but the air hole is not airy enough. That's the problem with this thing. But nothing a quick shot from a drill won't fix. Let me tell you a little something about that. Like obviously the vapor production is there. Like it just throws the vapor like a boss. Why was it vaping at the bottom? That was weird. But uh, vapor production definitely is there. Like tons of performance. Problem is, is this lid just doesn't have a big enough air hole to get the air into the thing. I wonder if... No, that wouldn't fit. <laughs> Take the lid off the eye, go and slap it on there. Ah, frig it. Yeah, it doesn't fit. It's just like a pube too short. And uh, I won't go around the O-ring. But yeah, it doesn't... Oh, probably tonight I'll drill it out. I'll bring it out to the garage and we'll punch a bigger hole right, uh, right through it. And then uh, it'll have proper venting. And then it won't completely suck. And it'll actually work well. But uh, it's a nice design for a tank. Like, you know, it's just, it's just like uh, this job you over here, the Kraken. This is just an RSST clone. And uh, you put your fluid in the bottom tank. If it was colored, you could really see it. But you can sort of see a line of where it's sitting. And then it wicks up to your whatever wick you want to use. Now, they give you some rebuildable stuff. They give you some uh, canthal wire at 28 gauge. Um, is this the kit here? Yeah, so, oh no, they don't give you anything. They give you a spring, two plugs, and two spare o-rings. And that's about it, you know, and there's your one plug, and there's your spring in the middle there. This is really easy to build, because all you have to do, and I like this setup better than this setup, is literally, you wrap your coil however you want to do it. I usually wrap it around one of these screwdrivers, and then when I install the coil, I just fire the screwdriver down the hole where the wick goes in. And then I attach my screw to my, my posts to the, uh, the leads. But this top lead, you don't need a screwdriver. All you do is push down on that washer that's on the, on the bottom of the screw. And you slide your wire underneath. Done. That easy. And this one here, you just bolt it down. And you're done. That easy. But yeah, like I said, just like, you know, let's vape you guys out. It's like you're going through a vape tunnel. 
Oh my god, it smells like butterscotch now, big times. Whee! Friggin' 3.30, got the car started and warming up, and uh, we're gonna frig off to work and hammer through this shift. And tomorrow's Friday, and I have a pop will kitten. A pop will kitten. That was a weird meow. That was a very weird meow. Oh, he's so cute. So cute. You like me? Sniff, sniff. Yeah. She's fluffy. You're a fluffy kitty. You're a fluffy kitty. Fluffy kitty. Fluffy kitty. Meow meow meow. Fluffy kitty. What are you doing? <laughs> Just headbutts the camera. Oh god. Oh, you're so cute. Look at your face. Look at your face. Look at your face. <laughs> oh boy. Don't worry. Where are you, Look at my dog. Why are you sleeping under the table? Is it like your new cabin? Is that like your new bed? You're weird. In the snowbank, the freezing snowbank, the Trans Am sleeps today. Anyway, people, I just uh, cleaned off underneath my wipers to get rid of all the ice and shit. Maybe now they'll work. Nope. Anything matters just got worse. Fuck. Anyway, let's go to work. Alrighty, well, we're at work now. It's uh, 3.48 p.m., minus 8 degrees out. Not too bad, not too bad. Gonna head her inside. I brought some Keurigs with me so I can make myself a coffee because I haven't had my morning coffee yet. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna rock a coffee and get this shift over with. I have no idea if we are short staffed for sure. All I know is uh, Sideshow Bob was off on, uh, well, last Thursday, last Friday, the weekend, and Monday for God knows what, probably pneumonia. Like, I'm thinking it's pneumonia to be off that long. And he had this really wicked cough, so chances are it's probably pneumonia. We might be short-staffed. We might have people in. Who knows? I'm going to head her inside and get this over with, so I'll talk to you guys later. Peace the frig. I can't even fucking talk. Peace the frig out, people. Thank God that nonsense is over with. What a long-ass shift. But we're done. Home time. Let's get the frig out of here. Yeah, buddy. All right, we're home. Let's go in the house and see what the fur babies are up to. Let Oreo out for his bathroom break because he probably has to poop. I have no idea if he went today before I went to work, so let's go and find out. Alrighty, let's make sure he didn't poop in the house. Holy fuck, I'm gonna need to pass a vacuum down here a lot. That's for sure. All this cardboard, little tiddly bits and other things and yup, yup. Spring cleaning, can't wait for it. That dance pad, going in the garbage. Going in the garbage to be honest with you. I'm gonna talk to dad and see if he wants to go halves. He's on a dump run. Cause I got a lot of junk in this house that needs to go and uh, I want it out of here. And some of it's too big to actually uh, hang on to and uh, put out at the end of the road every week. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, we're allowed three garbage bags a week at the end of the road, but uh, some of the crap is a little bit too big of crap and uh, can't really just toss that in a bag and, and let it rip. And the puppy is done pooping. And coming back inside. You can go say hi to Scampers. Yeah, you just said hi to Scampers. She is getting bigger though, eh? You could tell. Now, actually, something I wanted to talk about was her. Yeah. So, since I got Scampers, a lot of you, uh, well, I mentioned that I wanted to get her uh, fixed and declawed, and I was told that apparently you can get them fixed at four months old, and it's best to do it before they break into their first heat a female cat that is, because when they go into heat, if they don't get banged out, they can tend to come out of heat and their temperament can change and they can turn into real little ass fucks. And then you really don't like your cat anymore. You know, they get really screw really screwy and their mentality changes and they turn into little assholes. And people didn't really care about the whole spading. People cared more about the decline. A bunch of people were like, you know what? It's perfectly natural. A lot of people get declawing done, not a big deal. And since I've mentioned the declawing, there's been a group of people on on YouTube that, you know, they're sending me basically propaganda to convince me not to declaw my cat, you know? Uh, all this stuff from like Project Paws and, and PETA and all this other nonsense. And tonight, well, I got another one from another YouTuber. You know who you are, buddy. Yeah, you know who you are. And uh, the way I see it, um, one of the, the video that was sent to me was by this guy with a super flamboyant voice, like Mega Lisp called, you know. And uh, Oreo's totally walking right behind me, sniffing my feet. He's fucked. The video is talking about how cats need their claws to stretch. Cats need their claws to mark their scent and stuff. Where actually on a cat's paw there's a scent gland and like even a declawed cat will do this. He'll come up to you and start like kneading on you, like doing that, that kneading. And what they're doing is they're not massaging you. 
No, no, no. They're putting their scent on you because they're taking ownership over you because cats are jerks, right? They're taking the ownership over you. With or without claws, a cat can do that. Does a cat use its claws in defense? Sometimes, but the claw is like not their main weapon. The claw is more of a deterrent. The bite is the fucking thing you gotta watch out for because a cat's bite is more pollutant apparently than a rattlesnake's bite, they say. And I don't know how true that is, but it's been posted on a couple websites that getting bit by a cat is worse than getting bit by a rattlesnake. Now, I've seen what rattlesnake venom does. I haven't seen what cat saliva does, but they're saying a cat's mouth is more toxic, toxic than a human's anus. So that's pretty fucking hardcore right there, because, well, we all heard my anus go off multiple times, and that ain't toxic. I don't know what is, right? <laughs> Right. So, you know, it, it, it kind of pisses me off that people are trying to tell me what to do. And I originally was going to come home and fucking rage out on the camera. Just lose my shit and rage out. Then I thought about it. And I'm like, why rage out? There's no reason to rage out, you know? In the end, she's my kitty. Did you already drink that whole bowl of water? I just filled that today. Wow, she loves the water, her. Jesus, but anyway, she's my cat, you know. I don't plan on letting her outside. I have to live in this house. I bought this house, it's mine, I gotta live in here. She's been using her claws on the leather furniture, on other areas, and tearing it up with her claws, doing damage. So, I don't want her to have her claws, I don't want her damaging my house anymore. I understand a relationship between human and cat and human and dog are two separate things. Human and dog is, you're the master, the dog will be loyal to you, and, you know. Oh, how the fuck is that turned on? Jesus. I'm surprised my coffee pot didn't grenade. That thing's fucking hot. God knows how long that's been turned on for. I'm unplugging that son of a whore like right now. I'm done with that nonsense. But anyway, um, yeah, like I, cat and do, uh, dog and human relationship, the dog knows that you're the master and he's the pet and he'll be obedient to you and he'll be loyal to you until the day either he dies or you die. Where cat and human, let's say you're in your room and you had a stroke and you died, don't fucking think for a minute that cat won't eat you. Cats are carnivores. If you're dead, you know what? You're a meal. You can't feed your cat, you're a meal. Kitty's gonna eat you. And there's actually been write-ups on that too, where uh, some, some people who had a lot of cats, you know, they ended up dying in their house and people found them weeks later because they're kind of like antisocial people who just lived on their own and had cats and nobody ever bothered them. They're just kind of recluses. And sure enough, one day somebody went over to investigate the individual and there they were lying on the floor with half their face and body chewed up because the cat totally fucking fed on them because the cat was hungry and had no food and well, if that's the case, eat the humans. But anyway, enough of that nonsense. So, the way I thought of it is, is it's my life, it's my cat, I'm gonna make the decisions. Whether they're wrong or right, it's the way she goes. As far as Pete is concerned, I already dealt with those fuckheads when I had Felix, uh, because they got all upset when I used to make Felix talk, saying that I was causing, I've mentioned this in a vlog before, that I was causing traumatic emotional stress to my cat by shoving the camera in his face. Meanwhile, Felix would sit there and I'd be talking to the camera. Felix would actually walk up to me and slap me in the leg with his paw. It's almost like he knew that I was making a video and he really wanted to be in it, so he hit me in the leg with his paw. Or he'd come up and do that whole brush into me thing, and then stop and look up and do that <laughs> that he used to do because he couldn't meow. His meow machine was broken. So, you know, and maybe friggin' Popple will scamper's here. See, I told you she's getting bigger. Look at the size of her. Yeah, yeah, you're getting bigger. But, um,. You know, maybe she'll do that too when she catches on and realizes what's going on with the camera. Maybe she'll see me down here talking in the kitchen and come flying out of nowhere and decide, hey, I want to be on camera, fucking pound me in the leg or rub up against me or so whatever. So, but in the end, it's my life. I have decisions to make. Whatever people say online, they won't influence them. They can all, you can all offer your opinion. I have no problems with you offering your opinion. Whether or not I take your advice, that's my choice to make. And if the people out there don't like the choices that I make, and they find it really offensive, you know, they don't need to watch. That's how YouTube is. There's so much content out there. If you don't like what one YouTuber's doing, nobody's fucking holding the gun to your head saying, you watch this guy, or I'm pulling the trigger, and your life is over, bud. So, uh... Smarten the frig up type thing, you know? Nobody's doing that. It's all your choice, you know? Same with the comments. When I turned off the comments after like five people told me to go kill myself. You know, was that a cool move to do? Probably not. Because, you know, I was hurting a lot of people who like commenting on the videos and stuff. And it took a lot away. That wasn't right to do. And that's why I quickly reverted back to the comment system being on. But, um, yeah, like, that's something that I need to do is let people say what they want. Let them send me videos of whatever they want. You know, what they think is right. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Just don't enforce your opinion. Don't, don't force your opinion.
opinions on other people. Don't try and make them change your mind, change their mind from something they're set on because it's not your taste. Everybody has different tastes, you know? For instance, I'm vaping cherry cola. I like cherry cola. Cat piss bought cherry cola as well. He vaped it. Cat piss described it as puke. It tastes like vomit. I find it tastes like cherry coke. So we have different taste buds. We are both different people. We're allowed to have our own opinion. I like cherry coke. He doesn't like cherry coke. He likes the blueberry cheesecake vape. I find it's way too sweet. I'm not a fan of it. Does he ridicule me for that? No. You know, we each have our own, our own say. I'm not about to make fun of him because he likes cherry cheesecake or a blueberry cheesecake. You know, Adrian likes that one too. But Adrian's tried the cherry coke and he liked it as well. So, you know, we each have our own taste. We each have our own ways. We each have our own things. And that's what I'm basically trying to say is you can offer your opinion to tell somebody how to, how to do something, but if you keep harassing them and trying to get them to change their ways, then you're not doing anything right. You're, you're basically borderlining terrorism. Like I hate dropping that word and I've done it before in the past, but you're trying to instill terror in the hearts of that individual so that they'll be like, yeah, I better do it this way here. I'm gonna piss off this individual and I really don't wanna piss off that individual. No, 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 no. I'm gonna do things my way. I'm gonna make the videos my way. I'm gonna talk my way. I am gonna do what I need to do with my cat so that my safety, Oreo safety especially, and my items in the house safety are safe and that requires declawing. So that's gonna happen. And um, you can offer all the advice you want, but honestly, it's the way she goes. And also the video buddy sent me, the fucking cat was awake while they were taking the claws out. Like really? Really? I'm sorry, no. The cats are not awake. When I had Felix declawed, I had to pay, uh, I think, I think she charged me 35 or 40 bucks, somewhere around there, to, uh, for the cat to have knock, to be put to sleep, or basically not put to sleep, as in killed, but, you know, like, like knocked out while they uh, did the procedure and removed his claws. It wasn't like they fucking, like on this video, it almost looks like they strapped the cat down with some leather bindings, strapped the paw down, go in with some needle nose pliers and a fucking hacksaw, and just like, completely rip the cat's nails apart. Like, holy shit. No, 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 it's not like that. At least when I was talking to my vet, she told me the procedure. Yeah, you know, it's kind of brutal, but they do it in a way where if they can get the cat young enough, it's fine. Doing an older cat, it's kind of brutal because they said that, you know, there's risk of infection and all that because the cat's paws are a lot bigger and they can take on a lot more toxins from the litter box and stuff like that. But still gonna get her declawed and that's the way she's gonna be. And like I say, people can go ahead and voice their opinion. I don't really have to acknowledge it. That's what I'm getting at. But anyway, people, I'm home now. It's friggin' midnight. I've been up late all week. I need to fucking call her quits. I have some things I want to do before I go to bed. Uh, number one was I want to rebuild this rebuildable, this little guy. Uh, reason being is I was watching a video of uh, my buddies and he did something I really wanted to try um, called the Dragon Coil. And uh, holy shit, does it ever chuck the vapor. I want to build a dragon coil on that beast. So I'm going to edit this, upload it to YouTube. And while I'm doing that, I'm building some coils. So we're going to shut her down here, people. Hopefully you liked the video for today. If you did, click that like button. Questions, comments, concerns, you know where they go. It's down below. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.